another use for core flute material, this time as part of a variable inductor. In this video, I'll describe a simple L-match antenna coupler. Unlike many designs, both the capacitance and the inductance will be variable. The main part of the project is to make the variable inductance. Inductance is lowest when the rod is out and highest when it's fully in. The type of bar you see here was common in small transistor radios made in the 1960s to the 1980s. I want the ferrite rod to be able to slide into the core flute. To do this I'll need to cut away two of the separators. You need some scissors, they need to be the pointy types so you can fit in. There's spacing of about two millimetres. If I wanted higher inductance, then you'd want close spacing. I've lined up the holes with the next gap along either side of the ferrite. When you're drilling the holes, you don't want to go right to the end because you need some gap between the end of the ferrite and the start of the winding. That's important to ensure low minimum inductance and the maximum possible tuning range. I've taken about 70 centimetres of enamelled copper wire and made a coil. The coil is fairly flat and I don't think it's going to be particularly high Q. For a better quality coil, it might be worth experimenting with a rounder rather than a flatter type. With the ferrite rod out, it measures about 1.1 microhenry. Now we're putting it in and the inductance is increasing. With it all the way in, it's reading 5.7 microhenry, which is okay for an L match on 40 meters. The 1.1 microhenry, which was the minimum with the ferrite all the way out, is okay for the higher HF bands, like 10 or 15 meters. I've connected a variable capacitor and made this a small L-match antenna coupler, suitable for portable QRP operating. The circuit is just like any other L-match, although in this case, both the capacitor and inductor are continuously variable, so it should be able to match a wide range of antenna impedances. A potential benefit of this variable coil arrangement is, instead of needing a variable capacitor, you could probably get by with some fixed capacitors. If you want to try this for yourself, I suggest a few values like 10, 15, 22, 33, 47, 68, 100 and 150 picofarads should be able to cover most HF frequencies above about 7 MHz. Is this coupler any good? We'll find out soon. I'll put up an infed wire about 20 metres long, supported by the usual squid pole. You can hear the difference in the receiver noise as I slide the ferrite in and out. Here we are on 40 metres, and as would be expected, the maximum noise is when the ferrite is fully in, i.e. maximum inductance. And we have a peak in about the middle of the tuning capacitor's travel. That's around 100 picofarad, or a little bit more. Oh, oh. I could get it to tune up on most bands. 40, 30, 20, 15 and 10. 17 and 12 weren't so good, but a few meters of wire should help those bands as well.
morning, uh, Peter. Five, 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 five and six. I'll be listening for the last few minutes. Yeah, VK2 ZR there, Yeah, good one, Peter. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Nine contacts were made in casual operating on 40 metres. Distances were up to about 800 kilometres. Most notable was VK2ZRD, who was using an indoor magnetic loop. If you want to make the most of low power amateur radio, check out my ebook, Minimum QRP. Or if antennas are more your thing, have a look at hand carried QRP antennas. Then there's my latest book, Getting Back into Amateur Radio. All are available as ebooks for approximately $5 US via Amazon. Check out my website, vk3ye.com, for more information. That's minimum QRP, hand carried QRP antennas, and getting back into amateur radio. All $5 US or less via Amazon.